Now, as much as we'd love to hide from it, there is nowhere to go. Disruption is in the air again with constant load shedding impacting just about every household, every facet of life at the moment. Well, this morning, Nikki Bush is here to remind us how families can use load shedding positively. I mean, this is what we've got to deal with now. What are the conversations that are happening within households now during load shedding, do you think? And is that changing from when we first got subjected to this? <laughs> Yeah, Graham, I think it's so interesting because load shedding does give us the opportunity to pass on to our children the life skills of resourcefulness, mm. resilience, <laughs> and even entrepreneurship. And I'd like to share with you one of the conversations that I've recorded between a dad and his two sons. Okay. And these children are eight and 11. Okay. So why is this thing with the electricity bad? the children, we can't watch TV. Mm. And why is that bad? Because we miss our favorite programs. And what else, says the dad? So this is this inquiring conversation, yeah, okay? Good job, so far. Do, good yeah. job. We don't see ads for stuff, and then no one buys stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, and what else? And then the children say, shops can't open because they have no lights and card machines don't work. So can you hear the problem solving? I'm seeing a theme, yeah. <laughs> going on here, that the kids are working out the cause and the effect. Effects. I love that. And this is good because it's critical thinking skills that we really need to raise children with critical thinking skills. Love and that. then the dad says, and why is that bad? And they say, because then the shops can't make money. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, money is a virtuous circle. And actually, we're very dependent on electricity to make things, to sell things. So children are really starting to think, and I really want to say to parents, use this opportunity to raise children who can think through the consequences of something. So if this, then what? If that, then, then where what? do we go to? I, I, every successful person, just to interject there, that mm. I interview, I ask them what failure is. And they always give me this quizzical look of like, I don't understand the question. Because it becomes such a, a natural flow for them dealing with these. Why is it so important to know these things, to learn these things, ahead of entering into the adult world or the real world, if you will? Because one day they will enter the real world. <laughs> They'll be there. That world of work is going to be filled with moments that maybe they can't 100% control. And they're going to have to find a workaround. So what are we doing with load shedding? We're teaching our kids about plan B. That plan B is not, not always the worst thing that can happen. That sometimes plan B can take us to unexpected places, which might actually be quite fun, quite interesting, quite exciting. And I think that that is a great way to give our kids perspective so that they don't panic when things don't go their way. I absolutely love that. We're going to continue this conversation in just a moment. I have a feeling that learning how to manage our expectations is not just a lesson that our children can learn through this process, but I think many of the parents out there can learn to regulate themselves as well. We are talking about how we can utilise opportunities like load shedding to put a positive spin on that relationship with our kids and help to teach them valuable life lessons. And we're going to continue that conversation in just a moment. It's my feel good. Welcome back as we continue our conversation with human potential and parenting expert Nikki Bush about making the most out of load shedding and trying to find a little light in those dark times. I know I can joke about it because we're all experiencing it. And this is how South Africans survive, I think, as we laugh. Um, but there are some deeper life lessons ready to be learned here. And we ended off in a beautiful place. You've been talking about your plan B um, and for kids to be comfortable with knowing that there is a plan B, that you can utilize that plan B and it might even be better than plan A, you don't know. But there is something quite intimate about that space that's created when suddenly PlayStation's shut out, the web is shut out, TV is shut out, all of these, this clutter is removed and it's just you and the people that you love. Absolutely. And I think we underestimate the importance of that time, the power of the opportunity to connect emotionally with your children. So, for example, you might not be able to read them a bedtime story, <laughs> uh, unless you do it by candlelight or torchlight, <laughs> but why not tell stories in the dark? Mm. That is highly, highly memorable when there is only the voice 
And that voice, you know, we underestimate how important our voices are to our children. The voice just contains so much security and emotional connection. And when you take away the sight, the voice is even more important. So your children need to really hear your voice and smell you for at least 10 minutes a day. So if you're cuddling and telling them stories, that is just the, you know, the cherry on the top for your children. That lesson that we are learning through this process, even as adults, about that plan B, I find that we struggle so much with change and it's often the shock of the change more than the result of the change that is disturbing us. Why is it so important for our kids to understand that there can be a plan B and to have a plan B? Now with load shedding, we're practicing plan B. Mm. There is another way. As soon as those lights go down, let's play a word game. And a word game can be as simple as, I want a rhyme in double quick time and the word to rhyme is stop. Mm. And everyone's <laughs> got to start chiming in with rhyming words and then they get a chance to be the boss of the game exactly. and then you have to come up with the answers. So look at the life skills there of having to dig deep. It's not on tap. You've got to go within. Think with your feet, yeah, or on your yeah. feet, yeah. And that's super important. I, I love that and again, it's, I think the whole family could benefit from being in those, in those kind of spaces together and building those connections. In a practical sense, and I think our dad earlier who was asking those questions was on a perfect kind of route. How do we turn these moments into teachable <laughs> moments? What's a practical kind of way to approach it? Okay, think? so let's go back to this conversation because it continues. So, um, you know, he says, so why is this thing with the electricity bad? And they say because we get to spend more time together as a family talking and playing games. And what else? Now, this is the social conscience that's speaking. Mm -hmm. We now know what other people feel like who don't have electricity like we do. Mm. So empathy, very wow, important. Okay. And then the final piece here that is so important for teach teachable, a teachable moment, a lesson, is he says, can you think of any business opportunities because of this thing <laughs> with the load shedding? And the kids say, people can start businesses that sell generators. <laughs> <laughs> and a light bulb a moment. What yeah. <laughs> else? People can service generators or design machines that can save electricity and then sell them. Mm -hmm. So you can see how the thinking progresses. If a nine-year-old can make those kinds of leaps, just imagine. But only if we facilitate we the them. conversation and the thinking. So it's a continual what if, and then what, and how about, and helping your children to fill in the gaps. And Graham, I'm sure you've experienced this with children learning how to talk. <laughs> They're quite slow in finding the words, and it's so easy to jump in and finish and the sentence for them, yeah. for them. This conversation is an example of letting your children fill in the gaps. I love that. Oh, there's development on just about every level, which I'm absolutely loving. But going back to another thing that you've really kind of highlighted in my own journey, this notion of rituals. The fact that you can create one of these family rituals out of something that is so frustrating and seen as such a dark part of the South African experience, that's beautiful to me. That's what it is to be South African. I absolutely love that. As a jumping off point, I would suggest right now, get hold of Nikki's book, Future Proof Your Child for the 2020s and Beyond, and then continue the conversation conversation with Nikki directly on her Facebook group. It's a closed group called Parenting Matters, where she will answer all of your questions. This is a resource that I've been tapping into for the last decade, and it is absolutely invaluable. So please use it. And of course, you know what's going on. If the lights are going out, the games are starting tonight. Enjoy.